the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. We'll have the meeting of the Copley Trust. Here to speak about this, the application. Go ahead, Sarah. Um, so we are coming in front of the Alexander Hamilton Copley Trust um, Board to ask for funds for a dog park in town, um, specifically the fencing around the dog park and um, signs water and um, waste, um, compostable waste containers. Um, the funds would not be commingled. We have uh, come before the select board a few times, um, members of the dog park committee, which is a subcommittee of the Parks and Recs, looking for, we looked at different spaces in town, um, and we really wanted a place that was in the village that people could walk to and village residents that didn't have a location to be able to um, let their uh, dogs run free, would be able to go. Um, we've been looking at some of the other dog parks in the state and looking at some of the healthy uh, benefits um, for both the pet and the owner and the so socialization aspect where um, people uh, can meet other people that like dogs. Um, and the location will be coming down from the school and Park Street and where the Y is. There's an area of land that the town owns um, between Park Street and Copley Ave, kind of across from the Play, that's play. Or the old skating. The ice rink Yeah. How much? Uh, 17,000. And I think we have a couple other people that would like to say something. Yes. Go ahead, ma'am. Um, three children have actually prepared something to say if the software would entertain their speech. Sure. We're just going to stand together because that's easier for them. Yeah. It's phrased. 
And the neighbors, do they know about this? What is their opinion? They do. We uh, sent a letter to all the neighbors. We took in comments, yeah. We did. When you say that, means people that lived in the apartments or just the owners of the apartments? Everyone, the owners of the apartments, and they were supposed to speak to theirs. We did every adjoining property owner all the way through there. Uh, we got some good feedback, and they wanted to know. They were more concerned about hours, you know, yeah. to be sure that it wasn't in the evening and people weren't going to have yeah. their. Uh, but most of them were very, very supportive. They were supportive of it. Um, and who's going to mow the lawn and who's going to pick up stuff that gets left there because they didn't see the dog do it or whatever? I would imagine the town will do the mowing of it on a regular mowing cycle. Uh, we do have volunteers. We've had what, probably six people that came forward and said, we live here in the village. We are so excited about a dog park. We'd be more than glad to volunteer and do some policing of it. I mean, I think it's something we'd have to work out in, but I yeah. definitely see it happening. I think there's plenty of people here. I mean, you see how many people walk their dogs right here in the village. Well, they don't have many how many dogs are you talking about? Not a lot of the time. Year. No, not at a time. No, we, we go sometimes to the Waterbury Dog Park, our family, because my son plays mm -hmm. soccer right near there. And oh, there's only a couple dogs usually at a time when we're there. I mean, I'd say maybe the most I've seen at once is five mm -hmm. there. Take a glory. Here's a, a drawing. Oh. It, goes, it goes the other way. You can also ask the, the guy who has the people who um, mow the lawn, you know, we whack them. Yeah. Uh, what they have. Uh, Pearl. Pearl back, yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they can. Yeah. It's right. town property. It's mowed currently, <coughs> isn't it, by the way? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the school or town? Town. Doug, what do you think about it? Well, that's up to you guys because. I mean, I haven't really given any thought. I mean, this is the first time it's really come up to something happening there, so. Would you be willing to take on the maintenance part of it? Yeah. Well, what would be the maintenance of it? I mean, because. Just the mowing the lawn and the weed whacking around the fence. Right? We, we have been just mowing because, you know, we lost the rain, so. That's right. Uh, Yeah. So, Sarah, what are you talking about having some disposable, some containers to put the poop in? Mm -hmm. So, somewhere around the perimeter? There's a couple of them. They'd be in ground, mm -hmm. so people would be encouraged. They're called clean. compostable, and they also mm -hmm. have uh, compostable bags, too. So, you know, if your dog goes over here, if you don't want to use a scooper, you can pick up, like, a lot of them. They go. Like the ones at the rail trailhead down there? And it is bringing water over there, too. Are you going to have water there? We are. You have to pay for it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so your volunteers are going to do that one? What? Who's going to pay it for the water? The tower. Okay. You're not talking enough water, Dick, to No, I just wonder The installation of the water? Or the, what? the installation of oh, the water? That's part of your project. It's part of the project, yeah. Will it, be, will it be a water fountain for humans too, or just something on the ground? No, it will be like uh, we have it down at the Oxbow Park. It'll be a pump. Okay. You know, so people could fill a water bottle. If they, Absolutely, if they it'll to. be town water. Okay. Clean, connected. Mostly, the amount that's being requested is that is for the fencing, right? It is full installation of fencing. Nice looking black. Chain link fence, like yeah, nice stuff. You know what I mean. Instead mm -hmm. of doing like the silver, whatever one, we really looked at them and I don't know, it's a black. One. You're not going to notice it. It's not going to look like a closed in right. jail yard. Any, Any questions? Mm -hmm. Is there any other questions about it? I just want to make sure everybody, is, this is a three-season park, correct? We're not expecting our village guys to shovel out the dog park. No, in the winter. we are not. Snowball. 
I don't care. No. No. So they have their hands full now. We aren't going to put that on. All right. I think our animal control officer said we do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was our health officer, Todd. Oh. I knew it was one of them. Sorry. I just keep getting these guys. Confused. Let's say Todd. He's not here. So. <laughs> yeah, that's why I voted him in. What do you guys think? I'll make a motion. We do it. We, don't we have to wait a certain period yes. of time before we... Yes, days. So we have to wait three months. Right, yes. right. Yeah. But we make the motion tonight to do it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Is this something we vote on, you vote on? How does this work? All of us. All, all five? Yes. Okay. We're a team. We're a team. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Hey, before everybody takes off, I, I want to just speak to you folks real quick. That is probably one of the bravest things I've seen. The young Gilbert standing up there with brothers and sisters and, and, and giving the best presentation I've seen yet this year. We didn't have them by engineers. That was by far the best drawing I've seen. Good job. So good job. And thank you guys for coming in. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I was thinking that. <clears throat> Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? Second. And a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. Do we have anything else? We're having a efficiency remark. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah, we don't want it to fall out of it, that's no. for sure. <laughs> David's still doing it, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But he the well I forget to call him that we're doing it on. Oh you better tell him. <laughs> better tell him. You'll circle back around with what they come up with? Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Well I know we need a new rule. That's what Right. Is there anything else we need to talk about? I think we're here. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thanks for coming in. Thank you guys. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, next. Is there any agenda changes, writers, and Dan? Yes, please delete the conservation commercial commission. Delete it? Yes, please. Okay. <clears throat> Next, approve the minutes. The minutes of February 3rd, 2020. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. <laughs> community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight? Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, so I'm Tom Sainz. I'm the president of the Morrisville Soccer Club. And I, I'd like to talk about the Oxbow and, uh, you know, it's constantly getting flooded. And it means quite a bit of repair in the springtime. And I just like like to get some help with that and, and make a suggestion. So we've, we've had a soccer club down there for 100 years, you know. and. Um, it always floods over, of course, and there's nothing we can do about it. The levees, if we're not going to build levees like the Norwoods are in. But anyways, um, but what's happened lately is some number of years ago, the gravel path was put around the Oxbo for walking, and that's, that's really the cause of the gravel that gets washed onto the road that we need to sweep off and, and rocks. I mean, there's there's good-sized rocks right now out there on that and, and gravel and we've had you know as much as six inches, eight inches of sandbars going across there that we never used to have in the past that my belief is all coming from that path just gets, gets washed onto the field or whatever. And if that if that path weren't there, if it was seeded over in grass then the water would just flow across and it would go away and we'd go back to playing out there. It wouldn't be an issue. So I'd like to see, and we're willing to help 
see provide people, funds, or whatever, but I'd like to see that area seeded over and some help getting it cleaned up uh, in the spring. So. I was thinking the same thing. I didn't know who was going to do it or how long, how much it would take, but I agree it's uh, problematic. Yeah. And, you know, we've showed, we've shown up there in the past with, you know, an army of volunteer that breaks and, and it's just, uh, you know, obviously the, the big equipment, whether we need a little, you know, bobcat or, you know, the, the power sweeper on top of the tractor or whatever, you know, is, is, um, is, what, we, is what we need help with in the past. We've had um, you know, the prison guys or whoever it was that, that have been there and I don't think they're around anymore. I don't know what the status of that is. And then last year we just <coughs> hired somebody, somebody to do it. And, so it's, and you know, it's, it's mud season, the town crews are busy, so I just kind of want to plant the, plant the seed, shall I say, now, <laughs> right. early. Um, and I think, you know, probably for the, the um, you know, the planting of the seed and, and turning it back into uh, topsoil and, 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 uh, and grass, you know, may have to happen after the runoff, you know, obviously. I mean, you know, right. it, it needs to get a chance to get established or whatever. So, but first things first, we'd like some help with the cleaning up the power roaming or bobcatting or whatever. And I, I don't want to come, you know, when we're a couple of days away from our seat and starting down there. And our, field, our field space is kind of limited where we have to play. So. I know it's been on my radar because I was talking to Scott of Apex about it. He has brought it up a couple of times. But yeah, we'll last year, of course, Corrections doesn't do any of that for us anymore, so there's there's no crews. Um, and you're, you're right, springtime for the highway guys and the street guys, they're, they're just trying to get out of winter and, and get everything done. Um, so at that point, that period of time is one of their busiest when you're trying to get down there and start soccer. So. Um, but I think Apex had said he's willing to do it. Willing to do it. Yeah, yeah he's got a bobcat yeah, and sweeper and all that too. Just sort of last year, you got to remember, Corrections, you know, had been doing that for a number of years and like a week before they were supposed to start, all of a sudden I called them and all of a sudden, oh, we're not doing it anymore kind right. of thing. Right. So it was kind of a no notice for me and all of a sudden they were gone. Left to so, hang it. Yeah, they, we didn't have anything at all for last spring and the highway guys stepped in and you know, the police got the cemetery done for us before Memorial Day because we hadn't had any equipment for a long time to go do it with. Plus, we had mud season that we were dealing with. So, um, long term, you know, the, the river there's you know, river guys here. They're, the river is trying to do what the river wants to do down there, and the river would like to make that an island out there. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, as far as what the river is going to do, you know, it's going to be a constant fight. From what I've seen over the last couple of years, that the gravel is going to come up when the river decides to deposit it there in the spring or whenever we have a flooding. So um, you know, we can go down if we we could hydro seed it. That would probably be best to to hydro seed it at some point in time to get the grass to grow back on it. Um, it wouldn't prevent people from still walking. No, they still can still walk. walk. Yeah. They can so still and, walk. And, and you don't need them. Yeah. Uh, there. And again. That the stuff that's getting washed out across the whole field isn't coming from the river. You know what I mean? I mean it's, yeah, it's, right it's there. the path getting washed up. The path that's been put in there, man-made, and it, it's you know, it just opens that up because there's yeah. not grass holding it down. There's grass. Yeah. I thought it, it is. It, it would it be from kind of like where the path starts, like downward? Yeah, where all the little gate is that goes across. Just, just the horseshoe part of it. Yeah, just that. I mean, basically the. The upper river side of that. Yeah, know. we kind of sabotage ourselves using the gravel for that. Yeah, you, you can tell by the back side of it where it's not walked as much. It's all basically grown in, and it nothing gets turned right. over anymore. So yeah. right, it's probably safe for that. Maybe we could see if Scott would give us an estimate. What sure, we can. And then we get an idea. I, I would be cautious about putting a bobcat down there in the spring. Yeah. I can see us going from sweeping yeah. the gravel to ruts. Right. Yeah. 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 We've had, we've had yeah. been concerned about construction. <laughs> yeah. Small enough, 
you know, a small tractor with a power brush on it. It's right. Well, I know he's, he's got white can, tracks on his too, so it's better. And you can it. rent too. I mean, you can walk the rent the gravely or okay. gravely like walk behind yeah. uh, street sweeper things that, right. that whatever are it takes. A lot less heavy, but yeah. Yeah. Now, is there a chance of like black topping it at some point, making a walkway that wouldn't wash away? Or do we need wash to wash yeah. away? I don't I, I need. I mean, it's not wash out of there. Yeah, I, water comes so fast. You've got trees that also water comes around and they'll swirl around them trees, and that gets it started down there. And once it starts, it just continues. Yeah, and it goes out about halfway across the field. Uh, this year, it won't spring, it was you know, it that happened now. Mm -hmm. And who's to say this spring that it's not going to do it again, even more? Hey, um, Mike, and it's it's soft down there in the spring of the year. We, uh, we take the tool cat down, and we, if we can, I mean, because sometimes you can do more damage than good damage. Right. Well, if it's going to happen every year, maybe it ought to be get a committee and get a, a budget item, because where, where, where's the money coming from to do this? I think this past year has been the worst I've, I've ever seen. It. Some years it doesn't do it. Yeah, and it may get worse. Right. Sometimes so, it does it twice. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it... So I'm not finished, but I don't think it's a real costly thing as far as I think we're just talking about replacing that gravel path. Putting See, that's what I'm saying. You get a budget, over. so you come to us and tell us how much, maybe right. have a have a figure, have an idea, get some estimates. And we do it every year. Yeah. What, it needs it. what receipted every year? Well, whatever it needs. What, I got a feeling it's now. never going to stop. That water's going to come over. Right. No, I mean, the, I, the water's going to keep coming over. I understand that, but. Right. Coming over on grass, it's, it's right. not washing. It's, it's not, better than dirt. We're not shooting ourselves in the foot. Yeah. Yep. It, I don't think it's not going to unearth that grass in here because we get solid on the top of there. Or, you know, good established grass. We can see what that is. We, you know, there's, we can, we can, we, I think we have some of the fill we probably have up in the pit right now. We'd even probably work in there to backfill that. Um, then we'd have to get some topsoil and hydro seed it. Because the good thing about hydro seeding is it takes right away. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem to, to hydro seed it. Yeah. Okay. And, and just quickly, so who is, who is mowing this year? We're going to mow again this year. Um, so just like we did last year. Um, I'll get a hold of APEC. Actually, actually, APEX did the mowing, I think, down there last yeah, year for us. They did. So we'll get a hold of Apex and I'll talk to him and, and see if he can do some spring cleaning up down there for mm -hmm. us on it. Yeah, he talked to me about it. Yeah, so, so um, because, you know, unfortunately, once again, it's one of the busier times of the year for the highway guys. Yeah. Just yeah. trying to get out of winter and, and get everything cleaned up around the village. Yeah. Hank, you had something? Oh, it's more like driving. I have three, three times in one week have almost been totally taken out. And then just this afternoon from... Mars is properties right every 12 or it's, you know, it be right before it turns to 25. Girl came out, almost took me out. The guy saw that happening and we both made it through. And you just, I just see in my rear view mirror that he didn't slow down enough to like, whoa, well, what just happened? So then this girl proceeds to ride my butt all the way into town. And then I was like, okay, I was going to let it go, but whatever. And then so I'm turning her right to go back to the bike shop and she pulls up on the side of me with a joint in her mouth. And, you know, so then I see that she pulls into the gas station and I went over and said, look, you know, you don't realize that you just almost took me out. And she's like, oh, you're assaulting me. And I said, you just assaulted me with your car. And, uh, and then I almost got taken out by a plow truck. I was halfway in my lane. I actually had to go into a snowbank. And then another thing, a car turned right in front of me where I had to go off into the other lane where luckily no one else was. And there's a lot of bad driving in town. And a lot of it is the texting. Mm -hmm. well, and the smoking. Smoking. Oh, we need it, well, this girl had, I mean, I was going to let it go, but I probably should have went to the police department because she was right there at the gas station. But it was like, yeah. Don't you read the police blotter in the newspaper? Oh, yeah. Paper? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're stuck. Hey, erratic. Well, well I can see now. some of the erratic driving with potholes and stuff because I do that, but I make sure no one else is coming down the road and stuff. But. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely would have taken the license plate number down. Yeah. And said it. Well, I know where she lives. I can go get the license plate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll do that. <laughs> 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 I'll do that. 
Yeah, I've seen a lot. Yeah, yeah, I got pushed off the road last week. Car right in my lane on Randolph Road, and I chose to go in a ditch instead of to hit it or yeah. try to play chicken and go in the left lane. I got to get pulled out by a polar bear. Well, I agree. The one was like white knuckle. Yeah, I agree well, with the you. The guy didn't yeah. even know. I turned around, I didn't see who it was, and then I found out who it was. So I tried to try to call him and say, "Hey, look, right where that kid just got killed last year? You know, Dexter trusted him. It was like yeah. just too much because I was friends with him. So it was like, I had to turn around." And yeah, I agree. I sold my motorcycle because of it. Scary. Yeah. But I guess that's just Denny. As somebody that does a lot of travel and it isn't just in this town. It's yeah. Everywhere. It's the whole state. At least the whole northern part. I put on close to 200 miles a day in my truck. And I've seen it all. I say it. And you're, you're one of the better ones because I won't go into a ditch. Yeah, I did. Uh, I weighed my options. Yeah. But the thing is, I've seen it. A lot of other people have seen it, and not sure I've seen state vehicles texting on the interstate. Like I said, you see it all. Mm -hmm. But since they have made it okay to smoke, no, people tend now to drive stupidly because you they are all that pull out in front of you, and they'll do at least 10 miles an hour under the speed limit at any given time. Yeah. So it's, it's not just our town. No. It's a problem everywhere. It's, it's a problem in the world. Try driving in Romania sometime. <laughs> That's scary. Well, when I was in Romani, we were in a tank, so really, we <laughs> I'd rather be in a tank. Uh, we didn't have any. All right. All right, we'll move on. Is there any other community concerns? Oh, one more thing. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. I just thought of it because it listened in the hang. He was getting, reminded me of it of where his work is. Whose brilliant idea is to put a crosswalk on that corner? What corner? By the Bijou. Way down there going across the road Towards over the to Genoyas. That was the stage. That is the dumbest place for a crosswalk. They took the one out that was up the road a little ways and they put that one down there. So now you've got two crosswalks and tee off in the corner. Yeah, I'm call, just wondering who brainchild that was. I'll call Phil Scott right up. <laughs> we ain't got authorization to move it back where it was? No, or do we wait for enough people maybe to get hit? We'd have to see if you know how the lines, because the worst thing we can do is, is have all the lines still there and the signage still up to, okay. yeah. Why do you tell me why you think it's dangerous? Do you go down to that corner at all? Yeah. Have I you see people ever standing been there the when you're coming down in the morning and people just walk out. They do. Well, that's the unfortunate thing. They don't like well, get eye it's contact. Just, it's a tough corner. Yeah. As it is, because it's up in the air whether they're going to use it directional. Technically, they don't need to because they're not turning left. And you got the people coming out, and you have people trying to cross the road right down there. Being out of the way almost hit somebody once, but I've had to walk up the rear end of somebody that stopped or somebody standing on the corner. Wasn't sure which way they were going to yeah. go. Dennis, would you would you agree with the statement that it's worse when you're going down the hill past the Bijou and they are on that crosswalk? I would say downhill. When I'm coming along Bridge Street and I see him cross, it's not a big deal. Line of sight's great. It's when I'm coming down through because in that area anyway, I'm looking at two different sidewalks, three different sidewalks, you know, Portland Streets and then the, the two either side of the Bridge Street. So there's a lot for drivers to be looking at and that's where I've been caught off guard is I'm making, I'm into the left turn looking for cars coming on Bridge Street and I don't, I, I got a pedestrian by my driver's door. It was really close and I felt horrible. I never saw him come off the sidewalk. So, mm -hmm. what I would suggest maybe is we look at um, one of these flashing lights. Yeah, there's a great. No flashing lights for the cat, but yeah, mm -hmm. they're expensive. I mean, they're expensive, they but they're, them, good. they're they're worth it. 
But and down there, across. it just mm -hmm. when they moved it down to the bottom of the hill, yeah. it just, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Yeah. You put one car parked in front of the Bijou and you've blocked the vision that a driver coming down Portland Street has of that person standing ready to cross that's, the sidewalk. That's right. the issue. It yes. is. Or if they're parked, it's park, park, it's somebody fine. parked over by the hairdresser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be any parked, anybody parked in front of the hairdresser because that's hashed out there. I, it, yeah. I don't know if it's uh, I know they do, yet. but they're <laughs> not supposed to be parked. shouldn't be. But nobody parked in front of the person's behind the car. Because mm -hmm. yeah. there's parking spots. But just so you, know, you can do anything you want to do, but I just, the yellow light was blinking out here and I was stepping out into it and a car flew right through it. Well, so yeah, they don't, I mean, they don't all stop. enough of it where I kind of wait to make sure they're yeah. going to stop. Mm -hmm. That's a good it's idea. Not, yeah, oh yeah. It's like I told somebody that hollered at me for stepping out and I had to lock up my brakes and said, you may be right, but you're going to be dead right. Exactly. <laughs> because yeah. these things don't just stop on a dime. Right. Yeah. Well, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any liquor control? Do I hear a motion? Do I hear a motion to go in? Oh, I think a motion to go in liquor control. Second. I have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. So there are seven renewals. Yeah, we have it. And then there's one new applicant because of a technicality. Ten Railroad is merging their two LLC, so they have to apply as a new a new license. But it's really just them under a different name. Is there any issues with any of that, Richard? No, no, we're all set. Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve them? I'll make a motion we approve. Can we do it all at once? Sure. Yep. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Does Pizza on Main have like tables on the sidewalk in front of their side? Yes, they do. They have one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all, right. yeah. all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Do I hear a motion to come out? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So that. Next old business. Review the bid for the Oxbow bathrooms. I always remember last summer we went out for a bid in for the, to build the Oxbow bathrooms and we didn't get any responses at all. So uh, Trish and I went down and Donnie Blake had been a big help designing this course in, in the first place mm -hmm. um, and asked Donnie to bid on getting this project finished. So this is his bid. I'm going to recommend to the board since we did go out to bid. We didn't get anybody back. Um, Donnie's bid is a good bid. You know, everybody knows the quality of Donnie's work. It's yeah. well within our budget. Um, so I'm going to ask the board to approve this so that we can get started and get this done this spring. <coughs> and, and we're scheduled to start this in May. So. How long will it take, approximately? I, you know, this is pretty basic construction, so I think you're looking at months, maybe. Oh, good. You know, um, it's just, there's not a lot. I mean, you're, you're warming it up and being gone. Um, you may hear some comments and once again the site is for this to go behind the tree down there. Um, Donnie's running the sidewalk out so far for us. We're not going to connect it directly to the street because I know we've got a plan at some point in time we're going to pave that down there. So I don't want to connect it all the way out to the street right now because if we do anything down there it would mess up the connection later on. Mm -hmm. So we'll work on making a connection all the way to the street at a later date. So this price does include that sidewalk, um, and it's the same plan that the, the board had approved, you know, um, a couple of years ago. So, okay, do we hear a motion? Make a motion. We approve it. Second. <coughs> Second. I have a question about the dirt work and plumbing because I'm not seeing that in Donnie's bid. Is that Correct. something we're, we're going to do the site prep? Um, it was always planned for us to do the site prep. Okay. And the plumbing was um, actually there was a guy that from one of the plumbing agencies around here that volunteered to do the plumbing for us. Um, so the, it's, it's really, it's not too much because the water <coughs> sewer is all right there. Um, and he was gonna do all the plumbing for us. And then what's the name of the company that, it's not Fastenal, that, that does, the, uh, does the plumbing fixtures. 
they were actually oh, Blodgett. Blodgett. Um, they're they're actually giving us Blodgett. What's the other one? Granite Group. Granite Group. They're actually giving us a good deal on on the all the fixtures and stuff. So we've already got that set up. RK Miles is uh, donating uh, the lumber doors, some of that other stuff for us. So that's the reason why you don't see some of that stuff in there. So, um, but so you know, we've had some donations and some people step up. You know, that that like to, like this idea of the bathroom and they're volunteered their labor to get some of it done for us. Thanks. <coughs> Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, new business. Discuss the trail grooming equipment at Doohamel Pit. I think I'll give you a copy. See, I think it's. Go ahead. Go ahead, Hank. So it was. It was a time where I think it was I made bigly brought enough, and I took it as Mark Burke was allowed to do some cross country trail grooming, and then I brought up that. I was had been grooming by hand about 15 to 18 miles of single track trails for multi-use and the new word I'm coming up with is with the apparatus because people walking trails with nothing on their feet, whether skis, a bike, or cross-country skis makes it very unbearable to use after the fact. And so three years ago I bought this machine um, mostly with my money and uh, three friends. It's called a Snow Dog. It's a uh, 13 horsepower uh, cat track, um, kind of like a snow machine, but it has a handle back in the back that you uh, it has a kill switch like a snow machine, so if you fall off, it turned off. It's a one gallon capacity um, gas tank, runs about four hours on one gallon, which is pretty amazing. Wow. Um, so that with, with the apparatus of the sled that we stand in the back and we modified it so it's much safer by applying, I think it's called expanded decking, like you have it have yeah. back of the pickup so yeah. you don't blast out the window with your lumber. Expanded steel. Yeah, expanded yeah. steel. Yeah. And so it's a lot easier to stand in it, safer. There's only three of us that use it. It's a low speed tool. It's not really a vehicle, but although it is, I'll admit, fun. Um, but you use that thing for a few hours and you're just, it's a lot of energy. So. Keeping you fit, huh? Oh, yeah, I, I tell you, I'm in the best shape and I'm 47 in my life. And <laughs> so this is the after, I don't know if you can look at it. Thank you. So it's, um, it, it goes about 12 miles an hour, it's max speed. Um, it does have a fill switch, a light. Uh, it does have a tip over turn off too. And um, so I guess I gotta read the policy here. Um, so, and this is a piece of equipment that I was, so I guess I'm asking for, uh, I guess. Uh, permission? Permission and, and forgiveness, I guess, at the same time. Um, and this is a piece um, I was gonna do is to make it, cause for snowshoeing and biking, it's good because it's a lot turnier, so cross-country skis have a harder time manipulating through it. So I was gonna, through the fields and, and a couple of trails, is, is I was gonna buy this thing this summer when I have money to do it. And it's uh, to make cross-country ski tracks, to make a good like six or eight K loop for skiers. Um, and so, yeah, we've used 17 gallons of fuel, that's it this year so far. And, for how much use it gets, it's very minimal. I've had people argue me online, well, you're burning gas, and I'm like, well, that snow cat on Mount Mansfield for one hour is burning what we use all year, so. Um, and there's a lot of people at Ski Snowshoe. I get the guy up front there, part of the title, he started snowshoeing up there just the other day. I saw him with his wife, and there's uh, trail runners too, so. We've been talking with people, and when conditions are good, you can walk on it, you know. But when you get two feet of snow, you can't really, because then it pulls so and so. A lot of fat bikes up there. Uh, yeah, a lot of fat bikes, a lot of skiers, and snowshoers, and trail runners, actually. 
you have them showing up, and they've been starting to help snowshoe too. So I don't want to run the machine whenever I can, you know. So it's used only when kind of necessary. And um, so I guess, and I've talked to Don Avery, and he's known that I don't go anywhere near his spring. So um, that's good. That's. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. He lets me store it on his property, so I don't have to take it, you know, 300 pounds, take it out of my truck, and do that all the time. So I guess I'm asking for permission, and there's only three of us that use it. Pretty much I'm the only one this year because the other guys have more further jobs construction wise, so they haven't been able to help. And we're really strict on who can use it because I'm sick of fixing it a half hour after someone uses it. Right. You know, betting the handlebars and stuff. So yeah, I don't know if you guys would like this for your these pictures. That's the machine there itself. That's a cross country ski groomer piece I'm gonna well, purchase this summer. Will that go on this? One? Yeah, it goes yeah. on the back. Yeah, attaches to the back like that first <coughs> picture of So it attaches you remove the sled and you stand on that piece. Oh, okay. yeah. Since cross country skiing doesn't it's require as much. Back there. So we're trying to make that, and we don't go to the left side for the contact to let them not be stressed out. So, we, and we've also eliminated all of the parts that seemed maybe um, outrageous to groom out of the question when you got snowshoes. So to not tip the, the machine over into the so. Do you know how many miles of trails you have there? There's a lot. There's a lot of, and the thing is, is a lot of it in the summer, it's, you know, if two More years goes by, no one, it's a, it's like deer pads. We don't use any, we don't rake anything anymore. We just take sticks out of the way that may damage a bicycle or mm -hmm. something. And trees down, of course. Yep, trees down. And we never cut a tree out of the way. Everything was designed to just, Leave it where if you left, you wouldn't even be able to see it in two years. So, I guess I'm asking for the select board's permission to be able to use this. It's not really a vehicle, it's more of a tool, but some people may see it as a vehicle. Like, it's like a kind of like a gas powered wheelbarrow, but we're using it to see the outside. It's like a gra gravely tractor or something like that. Yeah. You know? So, any questions for Hank? This is all volunteer. This is, yeah. We've I had I, only had two concerns. One you yeah. addressed. One is the deer yard. Yep. Is that you guys you stay, stay you give them great clearance? Side, yep. Okay. Uh, and the other is insurance. The insurance there. I did look into that, and there really is no one that does insurance for a machine like this. And this, the machine to cause damage, it's safe because people will hear it whether it's a person or not. And um, we do all the trails in the directions that they that people ride them or would ski them. And so it does have a brake that works really well. Um, so the insurance part, I don't know of anybody that does it. I've looked into the insurance part because it's not really a vehicle. It's a tool. So it maybe it would have to be something under I can do it through my bike shop as a tool that I use for something. Or would that be covered under ours? And this is my concern is you know is that you're yeah. you're up there maintaining town yeah. property yeah. and it's and you know there's there's the machine and there's also that you're maintaining so if somebody gets hurt because of something that you neglected to do. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah, well there's there's yeah, I understand <coughs> so it's I understand Burbridge um, quite a bit. And yeah. Their their neglect it would not be an issue because it's snow. There's no, when the snow goes, there's nothing there. There's no change of anything other than it's backing snow, kind of like the yeah. vast. Video. So I guess I could call vast and ask what they do. Yeah, I mean, I can. But they're, they're using a snow cast. So you know, it's, the, the, problem is the volunteers aren't directly associated with the town yeah. per se. Right. Right. So they, you know, it'd be hard to have them fall underneath you know, the town's insurance policy yeah. because, you know, they're not doing it. So you have well, this group people, you know, that are, something that would really get your time. Yeah, so it's, it's not so, you know, the machine's one piece of it, but the other piece of it is you're actually up there doing 
work on town property that residents will go up and use and you know, if something goes wrong you, know, you give uh, people opportunity to sue some days yeah. so that's my concern is is who's <coughs> responsible for the liability of the work being done if it falls under the recreation commission that well this policy right here says that we're not i know okay this, so i think it? they have to be yeah is this new or think. old? This is old. This is one. This is yeah. a, a policy that has, was approved a long time ago. Okay. And, and it's right. how the it's it's not part of the the Act 250 permit, but it's the policy that the, that a pass board has come up with on how the land will be used, utilized a little bit for recreational purposes. So, what about a sign up there? About so for for we don't go anywhere near the gravel pit. You know, we stay away from that whole boundary setback and all that. And um, do people access? The people access it from the parking lot. The parking they go around the gate, and then they use yeah. the access road because they haven't been plowing it this year at all. So they go down the access road along the river, up through orange pillars, and you know. So, but well, if there's a sign on it, just that. This and we do use, that your, your use it your own liability. Yeah, yeah. This town's not responsible for your. But with two, isn't with two fifty road recreational use that you are covered? You know, like especially a property, private property owners, that if you get injured, because if you do post your property and someone gets injured, then you are liable. You know, because um, I guess that's where the verbiage, you know, language gets kind of dicey with that whole state liability <coughs> issue. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, can we um, ask VLCT? I can ask VLCT, you know, yeah. for their take on it. I don't have a problem doing that. It's just, it's it's kind of unique. It's new. It's, it's something it, that's it's, it's Well, it's, it's unique, too, because, yeah. you know, there, there are trails that are being maintained by a volunteer group without any direct supervision of the town. Um, and so who, you know, something, I'm not saying that you yeah, do anything yeah, wrong, I've heard faith I am it. it's, yeah. it's, you know, so if, if somebody says, oh, gee, they left big ruts up there yeah. and when they maintained it and I tripped and fell or yeah. whatever, and that's, you, you see what I'm, yeah, yeah, and that's where it's tired. not really, yeah. Yeah. I have another question. Uh, you mentioned Martin Worth. The only piece of equipment you're using is this thing here? That's it, that's it. Oh, okay. And I guess he said something in the past, and then I don't think he's, he's not doing anything. Yes. Okay, so. Yeah. Well, I'd like to see, look into that insurance, because it says right here that we're not, but we all know that when you're in town, uh, if something happens there, they're going to yep. come up toward us. And I, and I can call my insurance company at the bike shop and say I have this thing and see if there's anything going on. Yeah. Liability well, I think you know not necessarily the machine as much as I'm doing this work. Yep. Yeah. You know, right. and, and ensuring the yeah. practice of what you're doing. Yeah. You know, the the actual maintenance of the. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because like the snow packers and the mm -hmm. snow machine is vast now. I know they have insurance. Yeah. So maybe your group can get a policy said that you're yeah. a group and you're <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're covered. Mom, mom, like association. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're on private properties too. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's a yeah. good example. And all of the adjoining property owners that it is on, which is only 10 beds, is good with it. So. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to see what we get from I'll that? I'll see what we'll we get from BLCT if you could just work yeah. with me. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. For Thanks for coming in, though, Hank. Yeah, no yeah. problem. Thank you. Well, to be continued. Yeah. yeah. I'm not against it, just as long as we have everything covered, you know? Yeah, go there. My concept too, buddy. He's trying to get me to come down. Oh yeah, yeah. Come yeah. borrow a bike if you want. Yeah. I usually just let people walk. I might, I might I do that. And it's international guests coming in there. Well, I'll give a free tour. I do that too. Waste your time. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you. Good night. All right. Request to use Oxbow Park for Monroe County Conservation. Oh, that's who? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'm Peter Danforth with the Mall County Conservation District. And, uh, uh, we'd like to hold a fundraiser for our organization at Oswald Park in May. Um, and it would be a conservation field day as well, so we'd have agencies there, conservation commissions, uh, exhibits from the National Resource Conservation Service, and um, we would also have vendors. We would have a couple bands. 
and we'd actually have a beer tent as well. Nice. And that would be run by um, Moot. Um, the idea would also be there would be a kayak uh, from one part of the Royal Town to where we have our entrance at Oxbow, and then we'll start off with this. Um, we're still formulating all the various okay. things and outs that are going to be there and whatnot, but um, we're looking to work on a friend raiser. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Partnerships and whatnot. All right. Uh, Five seventeen. Any questions? What's that? That's a Sunday, isn't it? That's a Sunday afternoon, yeah. so we go from eleven to four. Oh, okay. This is um, this is nine to six. Yeah, that's true. That's for people who need to set up. Shop oh, okay. And All right. So okay. that's the entirety of the uh, time would take. But the public would be invited. Richard. Okay. It's okay. I'm using the whole park. Uh, well, I haven't determined the entire footprint yet. It's going to depend on the number of people that we're going to have there. Um, I'm expecting it's going to be some of the size that the Wednesday Night Live are, probably. I'm just asking because soccer usually has games on Sundays. So, okay. But, Good point. But there, I, there'll be lower field, or will well, be? Well, it's upper and lower, but I have control of some of that schedule. Use, so I, I right now, I can try and the, uh, the state schedule some, but I can try and get them. Yeah, the lower one. Up. Okay, that'd be good. And also, there wouldn't be any school games, so the school fields would be available too. Uh, for soccer, they don't let us use them in the spring. Oh. They use them for baseball. Okay, even the upper field. Yeah, we play both. The upper field isn't enough for all the teams. I did a few two things, two different things going on. One down the Oxbow, one at the school. So the U10s, the U14s, the U16s play at the Oxbow. The U10s up near where the skating rink is. Where the older teams play on the lower field. The U-12s play up on the upper deck of the high school. So it's all going on at the same time? Sometimes. Oh, okay. We, we oh, figure okay. it out. It's just knowing. Yeah. Okay. Parks and Rex was trying with, had the brainstorm about, Duffy had the idea about a kayak event with. I think it's the week before that. Oh, oh no, you mean from the, the Lamoille. Yeah, he, had, he wanted to do some kind of kayaking. Oh, with this? With no, that. just. Did it work out? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Nice. You want to do like a kayak thing or a bonfire or something? Oh, yeah. There. All right. Do we hear a motion? Yeah. We understand. Uh, we talked about the insurance certificates and all that yeah. stuff. They wear the. You got coverage. Are you good with that? Yeah, we're good. We got some. Okay. I'm glad I thought I'd <laughs> Make a motion to approve the application. Uh, Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. Thank you. Next, stormwater plan discussion. This a little sticker. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so um, as you may be aware, uh, we just finished the stormwater master plan for um, Morrisville, Morristown, I should say. And, uh, and Andre Teresa is here from Watershed Consulting, is our engineer on the project. Uh, what I'm going to hand out to you are our top three ranked areas that we'd like to work on in the future. They have this packet. Yeah, but this one's a little bit more. Okay. Uh, it has more information. There, I tried to send it. There's a lot of information. Stuff, Thank you. Um, but it was hard on the zip file. There's a lot of information, so I tried to kind of make it. Okay, everyone's got one. So, um, so we're here for a couple of different reasons. One is to introduce you to the three different sites we'd like to look forward to over the next few years. Uh, and on these BMP sites, it shows. Uh, basically uh, what the drainage area is, what the impervious cover is, um, project cost that we estimated to be, uh, the total amount of phosphorus and suspended solids that would be removed from the system and prevent from going into the rivers and to the Lake Champlain Basin. Uh, there's a lot of money going into clean water, as you may know. 
um, for the state and stormwater projects like these are going to be probably highly prioritized. So most of the funding for this would come from the state. Uh, I imagine a match from a town, if it's a town area, would probably not be more than 10% to 20% the most. And that could be in-kind matches as well, uh, resources and time. So most of the money, the hard currency, would come from the state to do these projects. Um, so the second reason we're here um, is we did have a project that we were in the middle of doing in across the street uh, next to Kaplan's. It was a pocket park. The pocket park uh, was going to be a place for people to go. And then it would also include in a stormwater drainage system that we were that was able to get funding for to help with the town to do this pocket park. And um, you know, unfortunately, it, it kind of got uh, sidetracked and stalled for the moment because we ran into some issues with piping. Piping was too low uh, where it's buried underneath the parking lot and we couldn't connect it to our system without making a major overhaul. Uh, and then we thought, okay, maybe we can let it just infiltrate because it's lots of sand. But then there was word that maybe that would flood into the basement area of the Kaplan store and that building. So there was a lot of things working against us there. And, and we unfortunately kind of overspent on it already, so we spent on the implementation factor of it. So there's money invested in materials and supplies and things that would go into it. And so we've been brainwashed, we've been trying to, that's a, we've been brainwashed. That's what you're hearing. Like. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're uh, We've been brainstorming uh, to uh, figure out what we could do. And so one of the projects on these um, three Lehigh ranked projects, and I can show you the major map on it. So this is an infiltration system. This is our number one ranked system. So this is serious parking lot uh, over here and it would connect to the piping that is ex existing but since the town may in the next couple of years be already thinking about digging up this area we can work in the time frame that they're working in for one thing they're going to get rid of this island that was initially put there and if if they're going to be moving stuff around we can maybe reposition the pipes so both this and the project we've been working on work because then we wouldn't have to worry about uh, infiltration and flooding of basements everything would be connected we would worry about that so we figured we could kill two birds with one stone if we could make this happen um, of course that all depends on the convenience and timing of what the town would be able to do over the next and this isn't something we're asking for to happen at all or over the next couple of years. So that's something, this is a, we're just kind of planting the seeds with you on these mm -hmm. subjects. Um, and this is the actual design for the pocket park. And it has overhead view, as well as the actual structure on the other side. And I can send these um, separately to everyone. I think they've seen them before. You know, okay. Yeah. 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 The, the pocket park that you know, was around the park, and I know the project right. been in front of the select board oh, before, oh, unfortunately. Right. You're right. right, right, right. Um, the, the, the piping, when it all came together, it was a lot of problems. Doug did his best to try to get it in. Yeah. Um, but there's where the connections all fit, there's electrical, um, and there just wasn't enough drop to get the water in. The Kaplan the, uh, mm -hmm. building is actually on a stone foundation. So it makes it a little bit more hazardous to put water up next to a stone foundation. And I still don't think we even have a, a, an easement from Sunny to be able to do it. I, you know, I had Sarah look in the land records. I don't think there's anything on file oh, yet. because we have those on easements. It's not in the land records, let's put it like that. Oh, okay. So, um, and then the other, the other thing that Sunny always had a reservation about too was at some point in time he feels like he'll have to um, the, there's an elevator in the building, but it's, right. it's tilted. And he feels at some point in time, he's going to have to put that elevator and he's going to have to do an external elevator. So he wants to be able to retain the right to be able to put that elevator on this side where the walkway is now. So those are some things, you know, okay. that well, I don't think he's going to for it because I got the email with this. I can look for it. And, yeah, um, but, but it's never been put in the land records. It just wasn't recorded. 
so and if it's not in land records okay. it kind of doesn't count well um you know so the what i'm trying to bring up is there's the option yeah. of that not having to worry about it in the sense if we could move forward on a project where we're putting in another stormwell infiltration system and the pipe can be raised at that point because you're going to be ripping everything up anyways then maybe you can explain the technicality a bit more um, not as much of an engineer as we do but it, no, yeah, I mean, the big, the issue that we ran into to, to protect the foundation, we, we have a, uh, the, that design in front of you has a perforated drain in the bottom, so any of the storm water that comes into the planter would have a way to basically be recollected and then discharged out. And we had two options. One would be to go to, to, to the street here, but we didn't want to do that since it was just paved, so we didn't want to cut, you know, a new pipe into there. So. We wanted to go to the other side because there's a stormwater line there. Um, the I think the elevations work, but the issue is that we ran into, as Dan was saying, there was electrical, which was buried in there, which was deeper, I think, than it was supposed to be. It was basically right in the way of the pipe. And so there was no way to get the pipe from the planter to discharge without moving the electrical. So, I mean, that would be a big job. What we were hoping was that in the event that the whole you know, if the town ever does, does decide to rip up that whole parking lot, there could be other options in terms of getting that water in the perforated drain to discharge down if you're going to be exposing everything anyway. I mean, I think it would probably be a lot more doable to do it at that time, so it makes sense to do it at that time. So, you know, it's, it, it's a great project and it has a lot of value, I think, from terms of, you know, not only the amenities for the town, right. but also from the stormwater, um, you know, an innovative stormwater type practice that the state is kind of looking favorably on nowadays in terms of uh, having, you know, integrating stormwater in kind of a public space kind of thing. It could be a model for uh, what other things could be. But plus both sides of the parking lot would be taken care of. Because this would take care of the drainage going that direction and then the public park would be taking care of the drainage going this direction. So, I think know, just if it could work out, it would be great. Um, since the investment has been made, you know, otherwise then we're gonna have to backtrack, find everyone that the money has been spent on, and that's gonna take years to bring back into the DC, and that's not gonna look good for us, it's not gonna look good for anyone who is working with us, you know, so it's <coughs> I'd like to try to correct it if we could. You know, rather than lose what kind money. of a time for time frame like from digging up and putting the drain pipes in, whatever you have to do, how much Time, is that like a month's worth of work? Yeah, actually, it's about yeah. a month yeah. to yeah. build up that system. So the parking That's lot would be planning. unusable for that month? <coughs> yes. So we Well, that you section, do? anyways, you could still probably find a way to drive in along the outside of it, but okay. there'd be moments where that would be cut off. So if, so if you did the drainage in the big part of the parking lot and then the mm -hmm. drainage by the parking, by the park, pocket park, There'd be two different things going on at different I would, times. I would try to, you know, work them closely together because um, we don't want to close the, the, the park that long, and okay. we want to work with the town if they were already doing work there anyways. We want it all to happen at the same time, and so thus it's just that moment in time that we have to be inconvenient to people. And you can't do it during; it has to be done like April on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We have to, we'll probably later in April. April is pretty. Still pretty oh, too cold. Harsh not to work in. Um, June. <laughs> yeah, June is a more likely. June to October. You know, we tried to do it. We were ready to do it in November, and that wasn't happening. So, uh, so we're trying to bring, bring the light back into that. But aside from that, um, I just want to make sure you were aware of the other three projects. Um, we have project that was brought up tonight, actually, the dog park. Um, so this is an infiltration chamber that would go right underneath the dog park mm. on Copley Ave. And is the board familiar with what these tubes are, are? Just to give you yeah. an understanding of what they are, essentially, that's a view. It's basically these orange chambers, which are, have an open bottom and sit on a bed of stone. Um, and the stormwater goes in there and that just leaches out. And so on the surface, you don't see anything. It's, it can be a dog park, it can be a parking lot, um, it can be grass. And so they're just rows of chambers that basically sit, <coughs> sit under the ground and you fill them. You put them on a bed of stone and then you, you put set the chambers and then you fill stone in between and then you put the soil up on top. So it's essentially that's what that is. And about what, every one or three corners? 
you would yeah, there's a, the sediment out. One of the tubes has people with the swirl separator. One of the you're right. One of the tubes has uh, filter fabric around it, so it catches all the sand. And then there's a manhole at either end of it that you can get in and jet back oh, over through. It's like you can, so you can basically jet the sediment out and then back through it out of the. So who does that? P trans garage. Uh, like hard oh. Hardigan or so the, the town that tell us we would we would have to maintain it. Have to maintain right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it'd be a yeah it'd be a, a back or a jet vacker situation every three years. In the um, just a, a note about the one in the in the dog park that that would that man that would manage water from the school because the school drains that direction mm -hmm. and the school is what's called this on this three acre permit list if. You're, you're aware of that. It's going to be a new permit that the school is going to be facing from the from the DEC in the in the coming years, right? So there's there's a reason for the school to be interested in managing their stormwater. This would help the school meet those requirements. In, in addition to you know managing some of the town runoff, it would manage the school runoff and help them meet their permit. We've already put in work up there, so this on top of that, they would get credit towards. <laughs> you basically get the tax cut, essentially, well, clean water tax cut. Yeah. Um, How long will that, is that also a month to install? To build it? To build it. I would say so, from start to finish, yeah. I mean, the biggest part with those is digging the hole. I mean, you can, Just put, you can put that, that whole thing together in, in two days. Yeah. I mean, in terms of putting the chambers together, they're stackable, and they come on a truck, and literally they snap together like, so uh, really on the dark you know, like, in a, like a Lego set, and it's really pretty easy. I mean, the biggest thing is just setting the hole and getting the piping structures together and stuff, but building yeah. those is pretty easy. And I know Trish has already you know, communicated with Peter about, yeah, we're building a dog park yeah. there, and any, any, if it's not done before the dog park, after, you'd have to include it in the cost of, you know, putting the, the, putting the fencing back up and, and yeah. restoring that right. stuff. It but. definitely makes sense to do this ahead of. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 And how much? Lead. Well, we're going to get the 30% design on it. Uh, yeah. Essentially, uh, what the big issue would be would be the funding. So yeah. it would be me, uh, the district, or whoever could do it to get a grant for it. And the grants for the stormwater projects haven't been too difficult. Um, the higher price items may take a little longer. Um, I get money from the, the DC through the Lake Champlain Basin program. Uh, those are the two main sources that I get money for in these sorts of projects. There's a block grant that sort of rotates throughout the year. And if I can get an agreement on a block grant, I can get that turnaround in two weeks. So, but, you know, it all depends on who I'm competing with. But I have a lot of choices when it comes to getting these uh, clean water grants. And can um, you apply more than once? Can you apply? Yes. For there and then yep, I can. I, I write it up two grants a month, probably, you know, on a scale from anywhere from ten to hundred thousand dollars. So it's pretty regular work for me. What's the cost just of the, for lack of a better term, the leach field underneath the dog park? That's the whole project. Oh, so yeah. the, the, there is an actual. I'm, I'm talking, talking just the just just so, the actual. So understand, I'm thinking timeline. Okay, yeah, we yeah. just. We're in 90 days. We are going to come back and and approve the money from a trust fund that we have access to. You heard it tonight. Okay. To build said dog park, this set. <coughs> so that's why Sarah's asking these questions about that. And yeah. my question would be, you don't necessarily have to do the entire project all at once. You can certainly put in the field underneath the dog park first, and then bring the other system down to it. Correct. Right. Um, what do you say to that? <laughs> Can you build the, the leach field first and then build the rest of the system to come down to it afterwards? We're the system is coming, the system, the stormwater system is coming down on um, whatever road it is that comes from the school. Top of the island. Top of the island. That's there. So really, this, the design just involves basically putting the structure in that stormwater system and going into the Oh, so there's no building up on the grounds right now. Oh, it's already there. Yeah, it's there. Okay. You're just going. You just stub into it. It's quite easier than interface. Well, easy. You have to It'll be deep enough. Yeah. I mean, on these pages, you have project costs. So it's 83599 just for the school. Is that right? For the project. Yeah. So on the so then the next one's 100. 
hundred grand, and then the other one's eighty four. So yeah, right? if you have a okay. yeah, copy of this, yeah. Yeah. it has all the breakdowns. Okay. Okay. Right that's what I was trying to do. Yeah. Materials. Well, no, I mean, 90 days from now, yeah. you know, even they, we're talking June before the money will be released, right. yeah. so and then they got to go to bed for contractors, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're still, still talking about the same time frame, I think. Yeah. So, there's a dog park is going in on this year, 2020. That, the, the intent is for it to win the summer. Right. Well, we plan to real prioritize that. Right. So the other the other piece too is our parking lot project is probably not going to happen until 2021. That's what I Correct. Um, yeah. And then as far as digging the whole thing up, I don't want to give you any faults. Well, you know, we, there's always been the conversations about you know that was working with them for to I do just, storm, yeah. to do a stormwater project yeah. there because it is a great time. A yeah. lot of it's going to be dug up already because yeah. we're taking out right. the planter that's there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we are going to be digging there. I think my concern is trying to connect the catch basins. Right. You know that we have around there. I mean, if if the grant is going to cover catch basins and we're resetting some of those catch basins, then I think there's an opportunity potentially to tie the pocket park in. But if we're not if we're not changing catch basins, then we're not changing elevations of the piping. If we're not changing elevations of the piping, then I don't see how yeah. we could go back and. So I think the grant would include some reworking of the. The collection system. I mean, right. yeah, it would have it to be the whole. Cost but it sounds like we have a little bit of time. Yeah, we have some time on that. Yeah. You know, but so once again, if, if we're not going to change yeah. out the catch basins, yeah. then, then we're not. Okay. No, I think we we, we would include should include that. Okay. Which it would, would be nice. It would make a lot of good sense yeah. to do that because then we could retrain, especially for the village crew. If you're retrained it because there's that that drains. Um, not only that, but also like the, the, the post office, they're put there for their loading ramp. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there, there's a, a fair amount of drainage there yep. that, that connects together that these guys fight with a lot anyway. I just got one question here. Yeah. Okay. In, in the beginning, you were going to run it down into like a catch basin or whatever it was called in the island over there. Yeah. It was Essentially a rain garden. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Right, so you're going to turn yeah, and go that. back towards the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, what? Okay, so you're going to take care of how much of the water in the parking lot to, to clean it or whatever, because you still got that catch basin at the post office. Mm -hmm. There's one up above. It's going to still the water's still going to go into that one, and then over by the well, the planter, whatever you want to call it now, yeah. that's over there. So you're still going to have essentially polluted water still going into the storm system, correct? Yeah, that's going to another, that's going to the other system. There'll be another system that's up there. That's the idea. Just just to, okay, right. Yeah. yeah, there'll yeah, be yeah. another So we have that other system taking care of that side of the parking lot, we have this taking right. care of that. And if in, during that process, we realized we could actually change the level of the piping to work for both and work with whatever the town's doing, that would be a great thing. We don't know if that's going to happen, but we have a time to work on that. Yeah, have, yeah. yeah. Seems like we could make it happen. Yeah, well, I think we could, but once again, it's you know it would involve it would have to involve changing out catch basins and changing yeah. the elevations of the catch basins to make it all work again. Yeah. I don't know what the outflow elevation is over there either. You know, do, you know, do we have to go out into Pleasant Street? Yeah, <coughs> yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. You know, that it, it's still got to all flow downhill, I guess. Sure. <laughs> Head off flows down now. Okay, so there was that, and then there was this one other one that really is more involved with the Mars property again. Um, this is Mustang Avenue. Uh, what's this? Harold Street. <coughs> Harold Street, yeah. And it involved a, a longer system. Okay. I want to take a look at that. Uh, this one is probably a pretty easy sell, I'd imagine, because you know it's taking care of a three-acre permit issue for them, mm -hmm. uh, and it also takes care of a flooding issue going into the neighbors across the street. Yeah. So we got both private and town benefit, I think, on this one. Um, and I'd say that would be to the path of least resistance project yeah. there, unless the Marxists. I don't know. Yeah, it's partially in the 
on the private land. It's partially yeah. in the right away. In the right away. Yeah. yeah. This is the water line there. And, uh, so, right. As, um, as you, you were saying, the the property on the corner is one of these sites that in the future is going to need a permit from the state. And so that would, for at least the western half of the property, because the property kind of splits the way it drains, that would manage some that of the side. from that property. So it would benefit that property in the future in terms of that permit requirement. And it would also help solve that town issue of the water flowing Going across, across that mm -hmm. house. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. It seems like it you know, would be a good project. Would that, how much of the, um, how much of traffic would be interfered with, with this project? Uh, I mean, temporarily to build it, you know, there would be some, some impacts there. Like to, a one way. Yeah, yeah one probably way. like a one way. I don't think you have to okay. close the whole road or anything, but. Okay. Any questions? No, bring the money. Yeah, yeah right. Money. <laughs> exactly. So I think that we probably want to focus on yeah, thanks for staying on the dock park area since the timeline is where you're going to do the work there. Yeah, so I'll, I'll got to coordinate that. Puppies come first. Tomorrow and see how much chances are getting money for that. Yeah, I mean, it, it gets approved in 90 days, but, you know, it could be held off a little bit to make this happen before. No, the puppies come first. first. Wow. <laughs> Listen. With a reason. <clears throat> you saw the version. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, I've got two little dogs. I, I know. <laughs> I use dog parks everywhere I go. I get it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. All right, next. Oh, we're exiting out the Conservation Commission. Approved highway mileage certificate. This is the annual highway mileage certificate of the member. Sorry. From last year, um, I was working with the state to get everything straightened out on adding all the roads and the streets. Um, that's the select board's uh, accepted after construction of the bypass. Finally, um, the state was able to help me work it out. And this reflects all that plus Belanger Lane. You'll see one of the things on there is, is the selectman certificate opening. Um, I'm going to do that after the highway map is updated. Um, and it requires the certificate to reference the map so the state that worked with me so once i get everything updated on the map i'll come back and ask you to sign certificates of opening for those new highways that you accepted so i have the original here um, i would ask that if you approve this to sign the original for me um, so i can get this done just bob sign no all, 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 all four okay all right I'll make your motion I'll make a motion to approve it and authorize Dan to sign it. Actually, you guys have to sign it. Yeah. I can't no, sign okay. it for you. I said you. I have a motion and a second. 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 Any further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Next, EMS roster at Zach Isham. Bill. Hi there. Uh, like deja vu all over again. Yeah, uh, it is. A couple of months ago, we took Zach off the roster. I remember. Uh, after I had talked to him, uh, he was uh, living and working in Florida as a uh, critical care medical death and transport team. Uh, and then life changed, and he's moving back to town this coming weekend. And he came in last week uh, when he was in the area, and uh, his request to be reactivated on the roster. Um, Do we like him that much? Yeah, he's, a good, he's in good standing and he's a good paramedic with good experience. So. Sounds good. I'll make a motion to reappoint him. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? He knows what he's getting into with weather. Right? Yeah, he does. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> Number seven, appoint new members to Parks and Recreation Committee. So we'd like to add two more members. Uh, Stephanie Hoffman, who's the mom that was here tonight, is yeah. one of them. And uh, Ray Bowden. 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 Is another. So I'll make a motion we approve them. A second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, approve the warrants. Make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. TA report. Monday, March the 2nd, 
scheduled for a select board meeting the night before town meeting. So also the school meeting at the same time. And I can't be here. That's what I really wanted to check to see if you know if there was even going to be enough to do a meeting or if you want to the, the agenda. The agenda is, is very light, we, you know, so we Can really we, don't have anything that we that we have to have a meeting for. So, you know, it's it's all at the same time. It's all crammed into one night. I don't think we need to do that. Um, you know, we can. We've already shuffled some stuff out based on the anticipation that you guys were going to want to go to the school meeting. Um, Good assumption. Yeah, it's, it, we thought it would be pretty reasonable to assume that. Now that our role really changed, anyway, you know, not meeting together and everything. Exactly. So, and it's, you know, it's the night that you vote on, or you, there's a lot of stuff about the school, and there's a big impact on you know the hard budget because of the school taxes. So. Yeah. Um, we can cancel that meeting that night. We do need you to appoint somebody to sign the warrants for the finance office that day. Sounds good. It sounds like Brian wants to do it. I'm going to be out of town. Okay. So we won't have a quorum anyway. So. Yeah. Are you here for town meeting? I'm here for town meeting if my plane gets back. Yes. <laughs> I was going to come meet with you anyway. And I'm so tag your red and Bob's <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. Responded. Um, you really should appoint a, a chair pro temp, um, just in case. Up. Uh, yeah. I'm uh, traveling too. Hopefully, I'll be back. I'm pretty, I should be back. So I'll be back Monday night. Yeah, I'm coming back Monday night. <laughs> and I'll be back over the afternoon. <laughs> Nine forty p.m. I'm in Virginia for Monday. Tina, I'll be back on Wednesday. Brian, it's gonna be you, Brian. Brian, it's gonna be only right here. <laughs> We have a flu snowstorm on that Monday. Brian's in and tell me. Brian's in by himself. Four empty seats. Yeah. <laughs> no questions. Oops. I, I get back in midday, Monday. Yeah. I'm 942 Monday night. I get in last of around 6. So we are officially canceling the March 2nd. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. We will have a quorum and we'll just shuffle the agenda around. Um, but please appoint somebody, I don't care who does, the board needs to make a motion to appoint somebody to sign the warrants for the finance department on, like on Monday, Brian, March the yeah. 2nd. Yeah. Brian Google. Yep. Make a motion that we assign Brian to sign warrants. Yes, second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. <laughs> <laughs> motion would, carried. Anyway. I would strongly recommend, since we don't have a um, the vice chair right now, Yes. that you appoint a chair pro temp in Bob's absence. So if Bob, something happens that Bob isn't back because right. Sarah's going to need somebody to do right. the... I'll do it in Skype. <laughs> the moderator, you know, election right. um, that the day of town meeting. Yeah. So I'll come see you anyway, but maybe we'll have Brian too. Right? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to make a motion to... What are we calling him? Chair Pro Tim. I make a in motion. Bob's absence. I make a motion that, that we make Brian the Chair Pro Tim in the event Bob is absent. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Maybe we should get cardboard cutouts on us. So fast. Up, up, up there. Now, if I get to town meeting that morning when there, can I make a motion to adjourn? <laughs> you have to work that out with the moderator and town clerk. You can appoint somebody else. Get Richard. Get Richard up there. <laughs> Is there anything you guys want to go over about town meeting, since this will be the last time that you meet? I, I was just going to come see Sarah. Yeah, I okay. have script 95% done yeah. Yeah, for a while. Thank you. Waiting on a couple things. I can send it around and just you could look at it yeah. now. Yeah, if you want. but I was gonna, I'll come see you. Is there anything that we need to prepare for you? I mean, you have your budget books and town reports and all that other fun stuff that... Do you know about the Thursday night meeting? Because I was gonna go, I went to see Sarah, and she says, we don't have to be there, right? On the 20th? I won't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. The BC, so the BCA meeting for Thursday night this week is to prep for town meeting, so it's... I'm going to show everybody how to use the disability voting machine, oh, okay. accessibility voting machine, um, how to go over, there's three different elections we're running with one checklist. People are going to have to choose between ballots, but 
that sort of stuff. Kind of a crash course because of the presidential primary. I can't, I can't work it, so. I have another meeting anyhow, so this is gonna work out well, thank you. I don't need quorum for it, it's more, I'm not publicly saying that, hopefully right. this doesn't air first. <laughs> she said it. Um, but okay. um, on my draft schedule, I only have you guys at a meeting. I don't have you working here. I actually um, tapped on the shoulders of some seniors who are 18 to Good. try and get our youth involved. Good. They were very excited to come. Yeah. Do you still want us to come after the poll closes? Um, or we I can't, are we allowed to? Oh, you are. Um, you are not allowed. allowed. I'm not but allowed. you could do You're the school. Allowed. You guys could do the school okay. if you wanted. Um, and you can break down the... All right. Seven. Mm -hmm. But you can't count the town. You could um, count the presidential primary, but that'll probably... The tabulator will count all of that. Okay. Right. But the school... Elmore and Stowe are coming here. We will not have two tabulators that night because Elmore is going to use theirs because of the presidential primary. So everybody will have their ballots in ballot boxes and they'll be co-mingled with members of all three town boards. And then they'll all have to be fed through the tabulator. So I do need, I do need to buy this Go ahead and keep going, Dan. The, the, the only other thing, I was really want, want to thank the highway crew for the work they did last week. You know, big snowstorm. Um, they came through it. Everything's all cleaned up and came through it well. You know, the, the usual complaints that you know, that we usually get, but um, I thought they did a great job of keeping everything moving for everybody. So that's really what thank I you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Elvis, do. Hmm. Any questions for Dan? Do we have a single axle dump truck at Fairfield's? Yeah. And the only one that's coming out? And they're working on it right now. They got it right in. So Good. it's in the works. Good. Right. The tandem's here, but they can't get in to get the, the other stuff going in. The tandem's here too? Somebody pulling a wool over our eyes on the, the scheduling on that? Because I didn't bet that it was even going to be done and built for a while. That one came first. The tandem came first, and then the single axle will come. And and then, of course, Fairfield, they called me. Well, oh, we're looking for that truck. And I'm sitting there, cars, where's the truck? And they got it in ahead of everything, put it ahead of everything. We went down, picked it up, ran around over there. So Beautiful. What's that? Good. All right. Next. Select board concerns. Judy. <clears throat> oh, thank Denny for putting the, um, the fire Calls in the paper, I appreciate that. Not a problem. Thank you, Tony. Brian, all set. Okay. Aaron? I just spoke with Dan earlier uh, before the meeting started about Mud City. I just want to keep it fresh in our minds. And just uh, I had nod to Kevin. Uh, I know you guys have been taking care of that up there. I got word from the family, they very much appreciate it. The attention you guys are giving that, one of our unusual circumstances we have. Uh, and Dan, we'll get talk to you a little bit about um, talking about Dave Roney, who has some concerns he has, but not it's not earth shattering, just coordinating stuff. That's it. I just have one more thing. Bill, you want to talk about the heart safe community thing that happened last week? Yeah, actually, I did. Um, so, a um, brief story. Um, last week, our primary crew with the paramedic got requested to assist Stowe. Hall. and uh, we left one person, we were able to leave one person behind here in town. Um, uh, no sooner did that crew get all the way on scene in Stowe, and there was a cardiac arrest report out of business here in town. Uh, and the system worked exactly the way the system is supposed to work. Uh, police and fire were dispatched immediately to go with Corey. Uh, she went with the second truck. There was bystander CPR. When she got there, the guy actually had a pulse. It was 20, but it was pulse. Uh, and he was starting to wake up. Uh, along with our police colleagues and uh, fire colleagues, Corey got the patient loaded. Everybody who showed up had their AED in their hand. Uh, she said she had a stack of AEDs at the door. 
of everybody coming in with their with their defibrillators ready to go. Uh, good outcome, uh, awake and alert at Copley, transferred to UVM, got a pacemaker. Uh, we're in the process of pulling the details together of, uh, of who did what and who was there, and then uh, we'll get, uh, we'll get uh, Dan Batesy involved, we'll get some awards, and we'll do a recognition on it. Nice. Nice. That's exactly the way things are drawn up to go, and, uh, and it's a, had a good outcome of it. That's great. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of our services. Yeah. Looking for a uh, dispatch too when you're doing your course. Yeah, so. ordered, ordered, ordered a pin for them also. Nice. All right. And I, I don't have anything. Just said I'm not going to be here on, on uh, March 2nd. I, I forgot to mention LCPC and when are we going to move on that? Soon. Yes. I was kind of waiting to after the election and get settled back in and then we'll We'll do it. Okay. Yeah. It's on my radar. All right. Yeah. I was going to talk to you first, but then no. It's okay. We'll, we'll, we're going to bring it back out. All right. Thanks for bringing it. All right. Do we have any other business? Do I hear motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay.